Hi and welcome to this production analysis with me, Paul Nolan, of Sasha's remix of Hot Chip Flute. Now what immediately drew me to this record when I first heard it was the synth stab. And the synth stab is a very old school type analogue vintage type sound which has been used over a number of years in underground Detroit techno and in Chicago house as well. It also immediately drew me towards a preset in a synthesizer, which I've used in remixes in the past that was fairly similar. Now, this synth plugin is called Silent One by Leonard Digital and is very good at reproducing those old school analog type of stab sounds, bass sounds, etc. Now, this stab sound is called Chicago. It's a preset in the factory selection. And what you'll hear straight away is how close it actually is to the main synth sound in the remix here. Okay, so what makes it so similar? Well, the first thing is to look at the oscillators, which are actually what produce the sound in the synth. So if we concentrate on part A, as there's two parts in Silent 1, part A and B, which add up to four oscillators available, the tuning is very interesting. So oscillator A1 is a sawtooth wave, as all four of these oscillators are, and the pitch here is set to minus two, which means when I play the appropriate note on the keyboard, in this case A sharp two, oscillator A1 is actually playing A sharp zero. Moving on to A2 here, you can see the pitch section is set to octave zero and also note zero. So what this means is that the root note on the keyboard, in this case A sharp two, is exactly what oscillator A2 will reproduce. So you've got two sounds here in the same synthesizer playing off each other to create a chord type effect. But that's not all. Moving into part B, you can see even more interesting tuning choices. Oscillator B1 is set to plus three notes on the oscillator's pitch section here. Now, what that means is it effectively like played three semitones further up on the keyboard from A sharp zero or A sharp two in the case of the root note that I'm playing. Now, also on B2 here, you have plus seven semitones. That's also known as a major fifth. So it's these tuning choices that give the stab this chord type sound because it is the equivalent of basically playing four different notes on the keyboard. And you could in fact get the same effect by playing those notes on the keyboard if you work them out. Now what you'll see is here, if I bring up my piano roll in Logic Pro by pressing P on the keyboard, you can see I'm only playing single notes here. As you can see zoomed out. So that means I'm getting that chord style effect from the four oscillators. So if I move back to part A, what you'll see is, is that's only part of the story. What really gives the sound its character is a combination of some effects, some processing, and principally some control of the filter in Silent One via the modulation envelope here. Now modulation envelope one is set to cut off of AB. So what that will do here is open the filter at the right time, i.e. during the decay phase, which means that as the decay phase of the note happens on the amplitude envelope here in the amp env section of A and also in B because they're very similar, you'll get a nice plucky type of sound. So if I push this up all the way, you'll hear a very different sound. Here it's much rougher. And again, if I push the filter up, you can hear all of that resonance and all of those harmonics coming through in the shape of those tuned sawtooth waves in the oscillator section. So it's actually the filter being dropped down here to around about six hertz, as it says here, or about nine o'clock as we look at it on a clock face, where this filter control will actually control both filter A in part A and filter B in part B. So if I drop this down here to about one third, you'll hear this type of sound. 
So you get this open sound, which has a bit more pluck to it than the sound that we've listened to previously with the decay and the filter pushed up. But we can make it more so if necessary by pushing up the amount. So the amount here is the intensity of the control that the modulation envelope has on the filter cutoff here. Now what you'll notice as well is that this is set up twice. This is to add variation to the sound and also a little bit of analog uncertainty to the sound in order to make it a little bit more interesting. So let's have a little listen to it now. You can hear it's now got a bit more squelch to it as I've pushed the amount, which means it lets more of the high end through during the decay phase of the modulations envelope travel. So, how else do we optimize this sound? Well, to make it even more analog, I quite like to use in the distortion section here in Logic, I like to use the overdrive effect. Now this adds a nice warm distortion sound to the signal in order to make it sound a bit more analog, a bit more warm and a bit more fuller. So in this case, I'm using a very, very low setting. I tend to only use it up to about 3 dB and the tone is way up at 20,000 Hertz, the highest it can go, which means the whole of the tone is affected. The tone control here is effectively some form of low pass filter, but it also allows you to decide the tone of the overall element that you're putting the overdrive through. So, you can hear that it's a bit more squelchy again and a bit warmer sounding. Now, in order to control this alongside our claps and hi-hats and kicks that we've inserted into the session here, what I may do is audition the stab next to the kick. Now, you can hear the kick is being overwhelmed slightly by the sound of the stab. So I'm going to drop that in volume a little bit. And then what I'm also going to do is go to the dynamic section, open up a compressor, and then set a side chain up using the side chain controls here at the top to audio one, which would be to the kick drum. Set the gain to zero. Set the ratio to about two to one. Nice fast attack and release times to keep it nice and plucky. And then change the detection mode on the compressor to peak, which means that it will detect the peaks of the audio waveform that the compressor is listening to, which now we've set this to audio one will be the kick drum rather than the stab. So the point of this is that when the kick drum hits or sounds or triggers, the synth stab will be dropped in volume by a certain amount in order to let that kick come through. So the key to this is to do it with a degree of subtlety. And you can control how much or how little effect happens to the synth stab here via changing the compressor threshold or the ratio controls. So what you can see here, I've only set it to minus three, which means that it's a very, very light and very mild compression, which just allows the synth stab to be ducked in volume slightly when they exist together with the kick. So that keeps it under control somewhat. Now a final piece of processing, I'll set up a bus on AUX1 and then go to the reverb section, open up a space designer, turn up the reverb amount, and then push up the send one amount control here in order to send a copy of the synth stab to the reverb so we can get a nice reverberant decaying sound that adds dimension and adds depth to the sound as well. Readdress some of the levels here in order to make it sound 
not too overwhelming. You can also turn down the send amount. And then we can listen to this by clearing all of our solos here by holding Alt and then pressing S on the solo channels to clear them. And we can hear the final result here with some drums that I've put in which are very similar to the remix. Okay, so that's the first part of our production analysis into the synth stab from Sasha's remix of Hot Chip Flutes. Hope you've enjoyed it. My name's Paul Nolan, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. At Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about the lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. DVR stands for Direct Video Response, and the concept is really simple. You upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor, he downloads it, and then pushes record on the screen capturing software, and it evaluates your work, so basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach online and the results speak for themselves. Book your place on the course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.